In every sport, there are many people that are good at the game. There are far fewer that are great. And then there are those precious few that go beyond great. Those that are so immersed in the sport that it consumes them. They are the specialists. I'm Ben Mears. Uh, I've been doing taxidermy since I was uh, started about 12 years old, which would have been about 1971. I have sculpted and molded probably around 300 mannequins, and there's literally been thousands of them poured and sold out of those molds in the last 30 years. I got interested in taxidermy. My granddaddy had mounts and went with him to pick up a mount at an old taxidermist one day and uh, kind of fascinated with how it was and kind of got interested in it. Kind of picked it up as a hobby. Done it for years, just my own stuff, and then got to doing it for some of my buddies. And, and as I got older, it kind of got into a part-time job for me. Years later, it went into a full-time job for me, and uh, I was always a big deer hunter, and deer was always kind of my specialty. I uh, enjoyed doing them more than I did anything else, so I got involved in the competition on the whitetail. I wanted to improve my work and got to going to some shows and doing some competing. I won several state, regional, and world titles on my whitetails, and it really did improve my work, the competition part did. And then I got interested in, uh, in the form end of it, sculpting my own forms, uh, coming up with new poses, new styles. When I started, uh, supplies wasn't very good. I've got some of my old forms that I look back now, and I don't know how in the world we ever mounted on them, but they didn't even favor a deer. I uh, got to studying the actual anatomy of the deer. I actually raised some deer from fawns. Got to study them every day, take pictures of them. Figured out enough to start doing uh, clay models and had some friends to help me build some fiberglass molds, teach me a little about fiberglass, and I more or less just taught myself on how I wanted to do them. So done a lot of trial and error until I finally mastered how to build a fiberglass mold off the of clay models. Well, I strive to do a quality mount. I put a little more time in them, and I want the mount to last a customer a lifetime. customer brings in a deer and he picks out the style and the turn he wants on his deer, I've got a form that'll fit that deer. Or it's a, a 80 pound deer or a 300 pound deer, I can give him a pose he wants and I've got the size to fit that deer. First thing I do is take a few measurements. Uh, there's about three measurements I can take and determine what size mannequin needs to go into that deer. It's eye to nose measurement. I got two measurements around the neck. You got a, a B and a C measurement. And uh, I take those measurements and then I'll cape the deer out. And then the skin is uh, run through a, a tanning procedure that I do. And uh, after the skin is tanned, then it's completely fleshed or shaved down. The skins are actually uh, shaved. Uh, about half the skin on them is, is thinned and uh, when it's ready to mount, the skins on them are, are real thin and pliable and completely tanned. Then it's ready to put on the form. Uh, after we determine what uh, form is going on, we will uh, form out the eye sockets. Uh, that We put the glass eyes in the eye socket, do some clay work around the eye socket. Uh, we cut the lip line for the lip skin to tuck in and the nostrils is it's got some depth in them where we can tuck the skin. Then the skin is actually glued to that form. There's a special glue that we use that adheres the skin to the mannequin to show your detail in the form. Uh, and then the antlers is set. The, uh, the mannequins all have a piece of wood in the head block that's actually, the antlers are screwed to, that's molded into the form. And that gives you some work to screw the antler skull plate. The skin is sewed up uh, from the back side. We do a short incision, which is about six inches behind the ears. To determine which way the ears needs to go on them, I usually let the customer figure that out. If he wants the ears forward or back, or one ear forward or one back. The actual ear liners that we use in the deer 
I use the Bondo method, which is just a thin layer of Bondo inside the, the ear. The cartilage is left in the ear, and that forms a shape for the ear, and then the, the ear butts is actually done with clay, and it's joined onto the Bondo before the ears is set on the mannequin. So then we can determine how we want the ears positioned after we get the skin on. If, if it don't matter, we just kind of do them where the deer has got the most action it can get or the most realistic look you can put on him. I guess if I was called a specialist, it would be because uh, the interest I had in the white-tailed deer of being uh, special to me uh, because of the, the love of uh, the actual white-tailed. The white-tailed deer has been good to me. That's what, uh, that's special to me is the, uh, I guess just the love of the, the, the hunting and the animal itself and the actual beauty of the creature. That's, that's what's special to me about it. It's a joy to me when a customer picks up his mount and it's a deer that he's proud of and, and he sees the quality and he's satisfied with how it looks and, and knowing he's going to get to hang it in his den or showroom and, and get to look at it for the rest of his life and every time he looks up at it he can remember that haunt.